Hello, welcome back to part two of my Red Power 2, uh, well, preview, review, spotlight, however, however you want to call it. I will be demonstrating some machinery. Um, well, to start off, um, I just make the four different blocks you can make now. There will be more blocks, but, well, I'll show you what's already there. So first off, you'll need to use an aloe furnace to produce some brass ingots. Those are used to, to craft the tubes. Three copper and one tin ingot will give four brass ingots. Um, and as a side note, you can use the aloe furnace to recover uh, four of pretty much any uh, wire you make with red power. You can convert it back to your ingots. It also works for native Minecraft stuff like the bucket or rails. You can re, uh, well, recover your iron you used to craft them. Just uh, as a side note, I didn't mention it the last time. So, the blocks, they are pretty basic. Um, they are also very similar. All of them require uh, cobblestone on the sides, redstone on the bottom, and pistons, regular non-sticky pistons in the middle. And then they are a little different. The first block I'll make is the transposer. Eek, why is it dark? Well, the transposer has two cobblestone uh, has a cobblestone and wooden planks at the side. Then instead of the wood, if you use gold ingots, you'll have a filler, a filter, sorry, a filter. And if you cover the sides with cobblestone and use a chest, it will be a deployer. And if you put an iron pickaxe instead of a chest, it will be a block breaker. These are the four basic machine parts you can make right now. Then there are the tubes. They are made like this. One, uh, two brass ingots and one glass block will give eight tubes. So, um, Another item we're gonna we are gonna use is the screwdriver. I didn't show it in the last video, but I don't know why. So it will allow you to reorient the blocks that you put down. Let's start with the deployer. As you can see, um, the blocks when you place them, they'll face you with their opening, but um, you can turn them in any direction you want with the screwdriver. It's very handy so you don't have to dig holes or whatever. Uh, place temporary blocks just to get it to face the way you want. The deployer is a pretty basic block. If you give it a current it will try to del deliver whatever is inside. So let's for example put some cobblestone in here and if we use them, use it, it will just put a block directly in front of it. You can also use it to, I don't know, uh, put flint and steel in it and it will create a fire. Uh, you can put a hoe in it and it will till the ground in front of it. It can do pretty much everything a player can do. Um, so be creative. Uh, yeah, and if you try it, if the, the field is already blocked, it will simply not work. It won't um, consume any more blocks. It's just uh, blocked until you remove the block and then it is working again. So um, next up would be the block breaker. I'll just put it this way. Um, it does pretty much the opposite. It breaks the block in front of it if you power it like this. 
and it spits it out through the hole in the back. You can either simply collect it or put some tubes there and I'll show you in a second. So you can deploy a block and you can break the block. Yeah, and um, you can build, make a circle like this with the tubes. So you can deploy the block, break the block, and it will be delivered through the tubes into the inventory of the deployer. So um, let me explain the tubes a little more. Those are pneumatic tubes. They operate on virtual air pressure and they will route the items automatically. So it will every item you put in a tube, for example, coming out of um, this block breaker, will enter the tube and be put into the next valid spot. That's any kind of inventory, for example, um, chests or these deployers or pretty much every block that has such an inventory can be filled using these tubes. If uh, the inventory is full, it will be it will no longer be in a valid spot. So if the deployer would be completely filled with uh, cobblestone and I break a block, it would not deploy uh, put the block into the tubes. It will um, break uh, stop the operation of the block breaker. So even when there is a block in front of it and you power it, it will not break the block. It will stop until it can deliver the block back into the tube and uh, some inventory can actually catch it. So uh, you won't have overflow. If you can't deliver the stuff anywhere, it will simply stop to operate. And if there's already stuff in the tube, it will flow back. These blocks have a buffer and they will store any blocks um, they cannot deliver until there is space and then they will try again. So um, with this basic setup, you can use um, you can use it to remine stuff. That's actually a term Elaram came up with. Uh, you see that's pretty much the same, just uh, the tube is on the top, not on the side. And I put a timer here that's pretty much a, a clock that's operating very fast 200 millisecond uh, milliseconds so if i turn this lever it will deploy gravel that's just simply gravel in there and it will break the gravel and uh, deliver it back that has a certain purpose because gravel sometimes gives flint and flint you know is for example used in arrow production and it's very boring to uh, craft these flint thingies by yourself so you can just use this to craft flint um, you see the flint will also be delivered through the tubes and put in the inventory of the deployer but it can't be deployed by itself it has no use so it um, won't interrupt there will won't be some flint spilling out here it will just stay in here because it can't be deployed if you want the flint um, to go another way you can use the filter that we just constructed put it here so it will be um, if first it needs to be closer than the deployer or otherwise it will just go in here because it's a valid target. If you click on it, right click, um, it will open up this dialog and you can put whatever you like in here and tell the filler that that's the item you want it to uh, accept. Every other item it will just not accept and uh, they will go on. So then it has this little hole here like the other blocks. You can connect the tubes and 
uh, run the items that come from there into this chest. Since there's all, uh, only flint um, that's accepted, it will just put the flint into the chest. And yeah, and sometimes it will look like this. That's because the block is placed and or is mined and then placed at the pretty much the same time. It looks like there's a block constantly, but that's just Minecraft being Minecraft. If you re remove the block, it will look correctly, but um, it works even if the graphics are a little glitched. So no worries there. And you see every piece of flint is being filtered out and put into the chest. So you convert, you can convert uh, whatever you want into whatever you want as long as this machine works for it. But, um, well, these, ah, we still have the transposer left. The transposer is pretty similar to the filter and uh, it will simply accept any block. So if I throw something in there, it will just output it. You can connect tubes here. The transposer, like the filter, can also be used to pull stuff out of an inventory. For example, you can connect it to a chest, uh, put a current on it, and it will take one item out of the chest as if you threw it in there. If you power it, it will suck any blocks uh, in front of it into the opening. Well, those are the four basic machine blocks. And I'll show you some of the creations I made using them. Let's cut the video here. And uh, I'll show you the creations in a second video because I think uh, I'm running out of YouTube time again. So these are the basics, how the blocks, how the machines operate, and I'll show you some use cases in another video.